Here we go with Social Psychology, Part 5, Attraction. First of all, we want to talk about why we befriend or fall in love. And the first thing that we need to think about is this thing called the mirror exposure effect. So the mirror exposure effect means that we become more attracted to somebody, whether it be friendly or even uh, sexual attraction to somebody, the more often we see them. There was a study done in which a, a... Equally attractive women, so these were uh, rated ahead of time by a group of, you know, a, a, a completely separate study where a group of people rated women's attractiveness, and they, they had an average of equal attract, attract, attractiveness, and they went into a college classroom, and they either stayed in there for five minutes, for 10 minutes, for 15 minutes, or for 20 minutes. I may be off on the minutes there, but it was, you know, increasingly longer. And then afterwards, they showed pictures uh, to the Students in the class, they showed pictures of the four women who walked into the class, and they asked, which do you find more attractive? Well, the least attractive was the one who showed up for the least amount of time, and the most attractive was the one who showed up for the most amount of time, which is, you know, really interesting and shows us that being around somebody more often makes them more attractive to us, um, and that's for friendship and uh, for more intimate uh, attractiveness, all right? Uh, So talking about uh, intimate attractiveness, the first thing, oops. The first thing that we look at, obviously, with uh, attraction and whether we like somebody or not is their physical attraction. And, you know, people can say that that's not the first thing they look at. But uh, research studies have shown that uh, it's usually, even unintentionally, the first thing. Now, does that mean that you can't immediately afterwards, you know, look beyond that? No, it just means that that's just naturally our human... uh, response to seeing somebody you know we're attracted by their by their looks in movies more attractive people are you know shown to be more morally superior they're shown to be the good guys usually and the less attractive people are oftentimes the bad guys right physical attractiveness um points us in the direction that we're of our attraction um one of the things that makes somebody more physically attractive actually is this back up to the mere exposure uh you know the longer we're around somebody the more physically attractive they can become to us right and physical attractiveness is also culturally influenced um different cultures and different time periods of uh history you know have found different types of people attractive so attractiveness isn't necessarily you know a one size fits all but whatever our uh, personal um definition of attractiveness is, that's what's going to influence immediately uh, whether we find that person attractive or not. So whether, you know, it be somebody tall, somebody short, somebody with dark hair, somebody with light hair, whatever it is, that's the first thing that we we notice, whether we think so or not. Um, another thing that leads to, uh, you know, attraction is similarity. We're more likely to um, be attracted to somebody that's similar to us. The adage that opposites attract isn't really true uh, most of the time we are actually more attracted to people who are similar to us. It's even similar looking, right? Have you ever seen somebody who, uh, a, a boyfriend and a girlfriend or a man and a wife, you say, man, they look like they could be brothers and sisters. That's not just a huge coincidence going on all over the world. That's um, something that's actually fairly common because we're attracted to people that look like us. We're attracted to people that talk like us. We're attracted to people that uh, enjoy the same things as we do. And it's, uh, you know, it's not weird or strange. It's normal. It's how, how we behave. Um, so yeah, so let's move on to the next part. Um, different types of love. Obviously we have passionate love here. Passionate love, um, is, um, if we use the two factors, let's go back to this. Use the, remember the two factor theory of emotion? You needed a physiological response and then you needed uh, a cognitive label for that response, and then remember that pointed down to your emotion. Okay. Well, your physiological response, right? Passionate love is highly tied to this, to the physiological response. It's highly tied to how you're you're physiologically feeling. Um, and then if you label that as cognitive, as that's, I'm, I'm feeling uh, love here, I'm feeling attraction. You know, that's what your emotion is going to be, according to the two factor theory. Now, interesting studies, you know, they go along with this um, physiological component is um, uh, they've done studies where people like are even walking over a bridge, like a high bridge over like a valley and walking over this bridge, these people find each other more attractive because they're 
in a state of physiological arousal, right? They're, they're a little bit nervous. They're a little bit scared that they're up so high. And by seeing that, right, they may mislabel that physiological arousal as a tr- uh, physical attraction. And, you know, that's where this two-factor theory comes in, and it kind of makes sense because it's, depending on how you label it, can determine whether or not you, uh, what, your, what your emotion is, right? And so by being so high, a physiological arousal is raised, and we find that person more attractive. They've done these, uh, these studies, and it's, it's really fascinating how uh, people find each other more attractive at, at when they're doing, like, dangerous things or, you know, um, you know, like if you take a girl on a date or a boy on a date to a theme park, you know, you might uh, have a better chance of sticking around with them for a while because, um, you might go on a ride that's a little bit uh, going to raise your uh, heart rate a little bit, which you know is going to be labeled as physical attractiveness uh, and your emotion, your emotion attracted to them as a result. So it's kind of cool, um, interesting I- uh, idea there. Let's see, come on, erase. There we go. Um, then there's the more compassionate love, right? Compassionate love's what uh, develops. Um, after physical attraction, after this passionate love, um, if you want an enduring relationship, um, compassionate love, the key with compassionate love, with this friendship, the, the, the key kind of to an enduring relationship with compassionate love is the number one key is equity. Equity. Did I spell that right? Equity. Not necessarily equity and exa- doing exactly the same things. Well, if I clean one bathroom, you have to clean the other. If I pick up one kid, you have to pick up the other. Just both partners in a relationship have to feel like the other partner is doing, a, at least trying to do an equal amount of work in that relationship. It doesn't have to be the same exact type of work, but they have to feel like they're doing an equal amount or that they're trying to do an equal amount. And if this happens, if this equity happens, then this compassionate love is going to endure. And this is how... Um, you know, long-lasting marriages are, are founded on. They're founded on this compassionate love and this idea of equity. It might be emotional equity. It might be just, you know, work equity. It might be different types of equity. But the key is the equity. Equity is, is um, in surveys, you know, across cultures, across all these different things, equity in a relationship is valued higher than sexual satisfaction. So, Equity is where it's at if you want to if you want to have an enduring relationship. And so, like I said, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it has to be uh, the, the your partner has to perceive you as contributing equally to the relationship in all its different aspects for things to be happy. And when one of those things is perceived as unequal, that's where problems arise. That's this idea. Oh, there it is, equity. And then finally, and, and one last additional thing that um, helps increase. Um, compassionate love and, you know, attractiveness and a long-lasting relationship is self-disclosure. The more intimate details that you share with somebody that you're close to, the more um, close you feel to them, right? And you feel like you have this connection. And so that's why, you know, when you share something close with somebody, and you've probably experienced this before, you feel a little bit more close to them. And when they share something with you, you feel closer to them because they've opened up to you. And that relates, you know, right here to this idea of compassionate love. All right. I think that's all we have for today. So thank you very much.